Good morning, friends. This is Dave Bauer, and I'd like to welcome you to Heaven Bound, the radio program of Calvary Bible Church in Gregg, New York. I see a sea. Good morning again, friends, and welcome one more time to Heaven Bound. On behalf of the good folks here at Calvary Bible Church, we would like to thank you once again for spending another half hour with us. I know we say it every week, it just amazes us the amount of people that will spend half an hour on a Sunday morning when you could be doing something else. But you spend that half hour with us while you're getting ready to go to your own church, as you're getting ready to go about your day, whatever it is, you take half an hour out of your busy schedule to listen to Pastor Jim Jenkins on the radio. And why don't you consider joining us at church today? Here it is, 8 o'clock. You have a whole hour and a half before Sunday school starts and a whole two and a half hours before morning service starts. I'm not even going to add up the amount of time for night service, but you have plenty of time to get ready. So why don't you plan on it right now? Our services today... Starting at 9 o'clock is our fellowship breakfast. Then shortly after that, at 9.30, we start our Sunday school, and that has more in-depth studying of the Word of God. We break up into small groups, so we have adults, kids, teens. There's all sorts of groups, so we can get a little bit more personable and dig deeper into the Word of God. Then after that, at 10.30, we have church, our morning service, and once again, the younger kids go downstairs for a couple classes, and the teens and adults stay upstairs. And then we break, we get out of the morning service at around noon, and then we come back again tonight at 6 o'clock for the evening service. And then on Wednesday, we start at 7 o'clock for our prayer meeting. And something special this Wednesday, we will have missionary Paul Scott from Vietnam here kind of telling us more what's going on in the Vietnam and how his ministry is going there. So why don't you plan on joining us? And then right after he's done, we break up, and we, we break up into groups for our prayer groups so we can bring stuff up to God of issues that might be going on and blessings that we might have had this week. Some other events coming up. This Saturday, which is November 1st, we are going to start a youth group. We will have it the first Sunday of first Saturday of every month, and this will be the very first youth group that we've had in quite some time now. So plan on coming to that. If you're a teen between age 13 or 19, plan on coming here starting at 6 o'clock, and we'll go until 8. Something else, November 2nd, which is a week from today, we will have Tim Germano, a missionary to the Dominican Republic, and then Saturday, November 22nd, we will have Reverend Tom Stiles here with us today, or today, as a guest speaker. Not today. That will be November 22nd. Well, why is it today? Because it's not today. November 22nd. Tom Stiles will be here. If you would like to join us and don't currently know how to get here, our address is 6968 Sweeney Road in Gregg, New York. You can punch that into your GPS, and that will get you really close Otherwise, if you're coming out of the north, like out of Lowville, head south on Route 12, and you're going to make a left on a Burke's Crossing Road. If you're coming out of the south, like out of Boonville, go north on Route 12 and make a right on a Burke's Crossing Road. There are blue signs out on Route 12 that say Calvary Bible Church and point you in the correct direction. So once you're on Burke's Crossing Road, take that all the way to the end of the road, make a left onto Greg Road, Make your first right, and that is Sweeney Road right there. We'll be up there about 200 yards on the right. You'll see the sign out front that says Calvary Bible Church, and it is a brown building on your right-hand side. And as always, we do broadcast our services live. The website is back up and running, so it's working good. That site is cbclewiscounty.com. 
But enough commercials. Let's get ready for Pastor Jim Jenkins to come. And today he's going to talk about prayer and how God is obligated to answer certain prayers, but other ones he is not. See if you fall in this category, and if you do not fit into the category that God is obligated to answer your questions, then listen all the way through, because we have an answer of how you can become in that class at the end. But before that, let's listen to Greater Vision as they sing, I Know He Heard My Prayer. Dispel in bloom with hallelujahs I know that this is real For in my heart I feel that my Savior heard my earnest prayer I know He heard my prayer He knows Take away my victory I can point him to the time When heaven's light did shine I can say he heard my earnest prayer I know he heard my prayer He knows my every that he heard my prayer. God is a prayer answering God. He's a prayer hearing God. The Bible says in 1 Peter, says the, oh, I'm trying, I forgot what it was. It said the eyes of the, the ears of the Lord are over the prayers, are open unto the prayers of the righteous. So the ears of the Lord are open unto the prayers of the righteous. God hears the prayers of his children. It's, it's like you have kids, you ask, your kids ask you for something, you do the best you can to get it for them. And God is the same way to his children, and that's important to his children. God is over his, answers the prayer 
of his children. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to the prayers. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. The righteous, the righteous. So what are the righteous, preacher? How do you get to be righteous? Somebody said, that guy's a righteous dude. Well, righteousness is something that you and I do not have. It is something that we get from God. You say, well, how do you get that? How do you get righteousness, preacher? How do you get, I mean, are, are we talking about being a holy Joe or holier than thou? Or? The Bible makes it clear that all of our righteousness, all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. That we have nothing good in and of ourselves. There is none righteous, no, not one. So if the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, but there's none righteous, no, not one. Now, there, there are people who say, well, you know what? That's a Bible. They're right there. You've got a Bible problem right there. You have a contradiction in the Bible. We live in a, a how can I say this? We live in a society that's becoming more and more antagonistic to Bible truths. I think that probably, some of you may anyway, saw that the mayor of Houston, the mayor of Houston, uh, subpoenaed preachers, sermons because she didn't like what they were saying about a new law that they passed. Well, number one, that's horrible that she would do that. But it just shows the antagonism that people have toward the gospel, toward Jesus Christ. We live in a, a very worldly, a society that is going farther and farther away from God. I read a statistic, and again, they're whatever they're worth. But in 25, 2005, 73% of people in America said they considered themselves to be religious. By 2013, that number dropped to 60%. Whereas people who claimed to be atheists in 25 was about 1% of the people in our country now has risen to a little over 5%. Now, if there are 315 million, we'll just say 300, 300 million. 5% of that is what, 15 million? 15 million people in this country profess to be atheists. The eyes of the Lord are open to the righteous, and his ear is open to their prayer. God looks upon the righteous. Well, you say, well, wait a minute. There's that Bible contradiction right there, preacher. You say there's none righteous, no, not one. Absolutely. Bible, no, I didn't say that. God said that. Uh, the Bible says this. All of our righteousness is filthy rags. We, we have no righteousness in and of ourselves. Yet the Bible says the eyes of the Lord are, are over the righteous. Well, if we're not righteous and we can't attain unto it, we cannot attain to righteousness. So what does that mean? It means you cannot earn righteousness means that you cannot work enough to get righteousness. The Bible says that for those who have been, if I can use this term, saved, born again, which are good Bible terms, they have the righteousness of Christ. Now, his righteousness, impeccable. There's, as Pilate said, I find no fault in this man. Judas said, I have betrayed innocent blood. The Roman centurion said, truly this man was the son of God. Truly he was the son of God. Now, again, 1 Peter says, the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. His ears open to prayers. God, I want to make a statement. God is under no obligation to answer the prayer of a person who is not righteous because they are not, they are not a child of God. Now, does God answer the prayer of a person who is, we'll put it like this, not saved? He can. Sometimes he does. And there's a verse in Luke, and I don't recall it right offhand, that indicates that God will answer the prayer 
once in a while. You say, well, why would God do that? Just because God's God and he can do that. Because God truly loves everyone. Now, God is not happy with the wicked. He has no pleasure in their death. But justice will come. Man, I saw, good night, I saw a video the other day. And a, a, somebody was interviewing people. And you think there's help? No. You think God should judge? No. You think God will judge? No. I mean, just person after person after person. Now, the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. God watches over the righteous. Again, we have no righteousness of our own. We don't have any. As good as we may try. My dad tried to make me, tried to teach me to do right. He tried to teach me to do right. But I learned more wrong in my spare time than any right he ever taught me. Dad tried to teach me to do what was right. Try to be moral. Try to live a good life. But you see, doing all those things, I, I didn't have any righteousness of my of mine. I have no righteousness of myself. It must come from God. Now, those who say, well, there is a contradiction in the Bible because the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ear is open to their prayers, but yet all our righteousness, this is filthy rags. There is none righteous, no, not one. How, preacher, then, how do you rectify, how do you justify those two statements? How can on one hand say that God is, his eyes are over the righteous, his ears open to their prayers in one breath, and then the other say, well, there's none righteous, no, not one. Therefore, God must not answer anybody's prayer. And that's not true. We know that's not true, that God does answer the prayer of his children. You say, well, how do I get to be one of his children? How do I get... That righteousness. How do I? How am I made righteous? Well, it's certainly not in anything that you do. Certainly not in anything that I do. I've never done anything good enough to to get the righteousness of God. I've never done anything that was worthy of God showering His righteousness upon me. I said, "Well, man, you're the preacher. If if God doesn't." give you some righteousness for what you do, he's not going to give it to anybody. And in a sense, you're right. And in a way, you're absolutely right. But here's what God does. God in his mercy, in his grace, freely, freely, I'll say it one more time, freely gives us the righteousness of Christ. It's free. As by one man sent into the world, so by death one shall many be made. Now listen to what Paul says in Romans. Many shall be made by the death of one, being Jesus, shall many be made righteous. Now, God is under no obligation to answer the prayer of a lost person. He is under obligation because we are his children and as his children God is will answer our prayers I may not answer them today he may not answer them tomorrow but in the continuum God says just keep on asking just keep on seeking just keep on knocking and the Bible says this that if we pray in secret in our closet that God will reward us openly God does hear the prayer of the righteous his ears are open into their prayer God does, but he is not under obligation, friend. He is under no obligation. Somebody's in the hospital. Oh, God, save my mother. She's sick. God save. God's under no obligation to answer that prayer. Now, will he answer it? Sometimes he will, just because he's God and he's good. Oh, God, my brother is dying. Oh, God, do something. Help my brother. Save my brother so he doesn't die. Is God under obligation to answer that prayer? No, not at all. Will he? Sometimes God does just because he's God. There is not one prayer of an unrighteous person that God has to answer. 
but one. There is one prayer. There is one prayer that God will hear and answer every single time without fail. God will answer this one prayer. You say, well, what prayer is that? Simply this, God be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me for Jesus' sake. Say that prayer? Absolutely. God has never refused a sinner that came to him and called upon him and asked him to save them. God has never refused anyone like that. He'll, t he'll accept anybody. Say, what about a really bad person? Those are the kind of cases God specializes in. Well, what about somebody that been a God hater? No, God will save, save them. What about a murderer? No, God will save them. What about a thief and a liar? No, God will save them. God will do that because he is under obligation to answer that prayer of that one who called. And you say, well, how do you know that? Book of Romans. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You see, any person who will call upon God to save them, the Bible does not say, nowhere in the Bible can you find, well, God might save you if. No, you won't find that. But you will find this, whosoever shall call shall be, not might be, hope be, possibly be, can be, guess will be, Bible says shall be saved. You see, God makes it clear that a lost person that calls upon him, he'll save them. My friend, he'll save you. I want to remind you again about this verse in 1 John chapter 5. There are two verses there, verse 12 and verse 13. Every single person that has ever lived has ever lived and who is now living. And people who are population experts say that there are as many people alive right now I don't know how many that is, billions. There are as many people alive right now that have been in all of world history. That all the people who lived in world history, well, man came, you know, started on the scene. No. Billions, of, no. 6,000 years, yeah. There's as many people alive right now as has been since the world began. Boy, that's a lot of people. Yeah, that's pretty a lot. Of, yeah, that's a fair amount. But God is under no obligation to answer the prayer of a lost person except that prayer of a sinner who calls upon him. Now, every single person who's ever lived, all six, seven billion of us alive right now, all six, seven billion who have lived previous to this, every single one of them, their eternal destiny will be summed up in this one verse, verse 12. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. 19 word, 19, 19, one syllable words. 19, one syllable words. Every single person. We'll say there's 6 billion. I think it's closer to 7 billion. But we'll say 6 for the sake of argument. Well, if there's been 6 billion alive now and 6 billion, 12 billion people, every single person, their eternal destiny can be found in 1 John 5 and verse 12. Now, John continues to write. Now, verse 12 says, he that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Boom. That simple. It's that cut and dried. You want to do that. You want to have the Son of God. Because verse 13 says this. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you might know that you have eternal life. That you might know it. Know so salvation. Not hope so. Listen to me. Hey, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Do you know? Do you know that you have eternal life? Do you know? I'll put it to you like this. Do you know that you're going to heaven when you die? See, God is under no obligation to answer your prayer until you're willing to come to the place where you're willing to call upon him. These things are written on you that believe in the name of the Son of God that you might know that you have 
eternal life. Multitude, millions and millions, yea, dare I say billions of people have no idea, no idea where they're going when they die. None of them, none of them do. But every single person, their eternal destiny will be found in 1 John 5, 12. And the assurance of that is found in verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. See, a person, their prayer, God is under no obligation to answer it. Now he may say, well, I'm not saving. God answer one of my prayers. I didn't say he wouldn't answer it, friend. But I said that God is under no obligation to answer a prayer of a lost person until they come to the place where they realize they're lost and they pray and ask the Lord, Lord, save me. And he'll do that. He will do that. He's under obligation to. Whosoever shall call shall be. God didn't say, if you come and call upon me, I might save you. God said, you shall be saved. You shall be. Now, every single person, every single person, you're listening to me this morning. You are going to stand before God and give an account. Now, you want to be able to stand before him and give an account. Lord, I, I trusted Jesus. I called upon him, and you said that whosoever shall call shall be saved, and I called. See, God is under obligation to answer that prayer, and now that you are a child of God, then God is under obligation to give you an answer. Yes, no, maybe. See, we have a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. We're the only reason that has that, really. We have a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. And my friend, the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his prayers and his ear is open to their prayers. If you call upon him today, he'll save you. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be shall be, not might be, but shall be saved. See, God is under obligation to answer that prayer. He is under no obligation to answer the prayer of a lost person. As I said at the beginning, he may do that. I've known God to do that, to answer the prayer of a lost person. But the only prayer that God is obligated to answer of a lost person is the prayer of the Lord be merciful to me, a sinner. Does God hear prayers? Absolutely he does. Does he hear the prayer of the righteous? Oh, most assuredly he does. Does he hear the prayer of the lost? He may hear, but he's under no obligation to answer. It's like if some kid on the street comes up to me and says, give me $5. And then my kid comes up to me and says, give me $5. I'm not likely to give either one of them $5, but... I'm more likely to give it to my son than to some stranger on the street. God will answer the prayer of the righteous. God will answer the prayer of the righteous, but the lost, he is under no obligation to do that other than, Lord, please be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me for Jesus' sake. My friend, once you pray that prayer and you gain the righteousness of God, not yours, but his, he'll hear your prayer. Call upon him today, friend. Trust him today. Because tomorrow, listen, tomorrow just might be too late. Friend, aren't you glad that God will answer the prayer of be merciful to me, a sinner? First thing you need to learn is that you are a sinner. We are all sinners. There's no difference between someone that is born again and someone that is not saved, other than the fact that one is forgiven and one is not. Wouldn't you like to be in the same class as the righteous and have God say he'll answer all of your prayers? Even though it's not an answer you may like, if you are in the class of the saved, he will answer your prayer. If you have any questions about today's program, any questions at all, especially questions about how you too can be saved, give us a call. Our phone number here is 315-348-6271. Or send us an email. Our email address is cbclewiscounty at gmail.com. Or even better yet, why don't you come out and join us today? There's an empty place in a pew that can only be filled by you. Thank you again for joining us this half hour. Lord willing, we will catch you again next week. 
and Heaven Bound.